Welcome to Food Point, episode 211, Spotlight on Chocolate. Pretty much everyone likes chocolate in some form or another, but what actually makes each type different? Essentially, there are three main types, dark, milk, and white. Dark chocolate is the most common form of chocolate used in cooking, and there are several varieties determined by the percentage of cocoa solids contained in them. Most often, in both cooking and eating chocolate, it will be somewhere around the 50% mark. But for an extreme chocolate flavour, you can get 70, 80, or even 90%. 100% would be plain cocoa powder. The higher percentage of cocoa solids, the more bitter and less sweet the flavour becomes. Like coffee, cocoa powder is not sweet on its own. Sometimes I'll add 70% cocoa dark chocolate to a savoury dish for an interesting depth of flavour. A classic Mexican mole sauce is an example of a savoury dish that uses chocolate or cocoa powder. Next is white chocolate, which contains no cocoa solids at all, but gets its flavour from cocoa butter and whatever other flavours are added in, usually vanilla. Most of the time you see white chocolate in baking is in the form of chocolate chips. However, I've recently had some success using it in ice cream. Finally, is milk chocolate, which as its name suggests, has had dairy added to it. This is the type used in most commercial confectionery and candy bars, but not really used often in cooking, as the added dairy can make it difficult to work with. Mostly you'll see it used in baking in the form of chocolate chips. Milk chocolate generally has a cocoa solid content of between 10 to 25 percent. For those of you who are unsure of the difference between eating chocolate and compound chocolate, eating chocolate is made using cocoa butter, whereas compound chocolate uses vegetable fat instead. This makes compound chocolate better for baking. When melting chocolate for the purposes of dipping things like profiteroles, I usually use the double boiler method, meaning you place the chocolate into a heatproof bowl over a pan of simmering water until it melts. I also like to use a combination of dark and milk chocolate as I think you get the best balance of sweetness and rich flavour. Excess chocolate can be used to dip strawberries or cherries, or you could even make some chocolate bark by pouring it onto a baking sheet and scattering over some flavourings, such as cookie crumbs, flaked almonds, and a dash of sea salt. If you want to make shaved chocolate for decorating cakes or desserts, I usually use either a vegetable peeler or a knife. To make ganache, all you really need is some chocolate and some single or pure cream. Each type of chocolate has its own ratio of cream to chocolate in order to get the best result. For example, take 250 grams of dark chocolate, 250 grams of milk chocolate, and 250 grams of white chocolate. Heat some cream over a medium heat until it just starts to simmer, then pour it over the chocolate. For the dark, you will need a full cup of cream. For the milk chocolate, you'll need two thirds a cup of cream. For the white chocolate, you'll need only one third of a cup of cream. Allow it to sit for around five minutes so that the chocolate has time to melt. Then stir together until smooth. If the chocolate hasn't completely melted or you have lumps, just give the ganache 15 second bursts in a microwave until smooth. You can use warm ganache as a chocolate fondue, or wait for it to cool before using it as a filling or frosting for cakes, cupcakes, or other desserts. I hope you've enjoyed this video and picked up some handy information. For a bonus chocolate mousse recipe, please click the screen on the left, or for my chocolate fondant recipe, please click the box on the right, and if you like what you see, subscribe and stay tuned for more.